Welcome to this clinical case discussion in ophthalmology. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting case of herpes simplex keratitis. It was a dendritic keratitis which was pretty big in size and we show you a follow-up of over a month in which shows gradual improvement. So before going on to the case I'll just quickly outline that uh, herpes simplex virus can be of two types HSV1 and HSV2. The HSV1 is basically above the waist and HSV2 is below the waist and it is genital herpes. HSV transmission is facilitated in conditions of crowding and poor hygiene. Primary infection is supposed to occur in children although it can occur in older life as well. It is spread by droplet infection and it is uncommon during the first six months of life because of maternal antibodies. The symptoms are mild fever, malaise and upper respiratory tract infection. Blepharitis and follicular conjunctivitis can occur. The treatment if necessary involves topical acyclovir ointment. The main disease which you see is a recurrent herpes infection. After primary infection, the virus usually resides usually in the sensory ganglion and it can be reactivated in, for, in many forms. One is a subclinical reactivation, can periodically occur in which the patient is contagious. While there can be a clinical reactivation, there's a variety of stress factors which include ultraviolet radiation, trauma, trigeminal injury, and the pattern of disease depends on the reactivation site. But the rate of recurrence, it is important that it is about 10% at one year. The higher the number of previous attacks, the more is the risk of recurrence. And the risk of factors of a severe disease include immunosuppression, uh, atopic eye disease, childhood immunodeficiency, measles, malaria, and malnutrition. Here we present a history of a 67-year-old female. She had a routine cataract extraction. There was no history of herpes simplex infection before. She was prescribed postoperatively moxifloxacin eye drops, dexamethasone eye drops, and napafenic eye drops to be used three times a day. And she was doing pretty well. And postoperatively, her vision improved to 612 at three weeks. But at fourth week, she presents with decreased vision, blurring of vision, and pain in that eye. An examination, we found that her vision had dropped down to counting fingers in that eye. The, the eye was definitely, there was ciliary congestion. And in the central cornea, you can see a, a sort of an enlarged dendritic pattern, which we'll show you in the video in the next slide. And otherwise, she was pseudophagic, and the pupillary reaction was uh, within normal limits. And previous examination had showed that she had mild macular degeneration on both sides. This is what we saw on examination. And here you can see there's an epithelial defect which is rounded. So this is slightly enlarged picture which we've captured. So what we want to show that this is basically an epithelial defect and there's irregular edges of the ulcer. And that tells you where the epithelial cells, a heaping of cells is occurring. For your clarification or your understanding, I've highlighted the epithelial defect. I did not stain this with fluorescein dye, but here you can see the epithelial defect is highlighted. The one thing what you want to see is the epithelial defect. What is the size? And if you measure it, probably is about 3-4 millimeter in size. You want to measure it horizontally and vertically as well so that you can follow up and see if it's increasing in size or it remains the same in size. And then you take a slit picture and here you want to see is there any thinning of the cornea. We'll show you a differential diagnosis uh, slide in which a patient had thinning of the cornea and that is the very important step you want to pick up in patients with herpetic keratitis because if they do not respond to treatment, what will happen is they'll maintain that epithelial defect that might remain the same in size, but there will be central thinning of the cornea which starts to happen. So here there's no thinning of the cornea. We started her on topical acyclovir, which is lower eye ointment, acyclovir. And initially we started her on 200 milligram. The reason for starting oral 
acyclovir was because we know that the potency of or, or topical acyclovir available here is not that and on clinical experience we found that it's not is not that much effective so we usually use a combination of topical and oral antiviral on top of that to prevent any super air infection obviously she was also uh, using with floxacin eye drops on top of that we also gave her B-toptic S eye drops which she had been using before as well a video of that patient in which you see the same epithelial defect which I showed you this is in a still picture over here and here you can see that whitened area or the margins of the epithelial defect here you are seeing with a slit lamp or initially on low magnification then on higher magnification and we are trying to get that slit form and see if there's anything in it here you also see there's a punctate epithelial keratopathy that is secondary to the drops she was using and uh, we reduced the number of drops she was using post-operatively and we just kept her we just also reduced the topical nepaphenic eye drops but they tend to reduce epithelial healing here that you can see the epithelial defect at higher magnification you can see the patient's epithelial defect is reducing in size on the next visit when we started her on the treatment but the response was slow the the reflex of the cornea you see is a bit dull in this patient here you can see again a high magnification picture here you saying you want to study the uh, the cells which are on the edge of that ulcer the ulcers always are going to get smaller and smaller as they go from the periphery to the center now on day 12 you can see now it looks like a dendritic keratitis initially it was looking like a most probably a geographic keratitis which was reducing in size so the most probable cause for her dendritic keratitis is probably she must have had a herpes keratitis infection a subclinical one she did not know of and that got reactivated by using topical steroids for about a month and then go on to day 34 you can see the epithelial defect heals and then there's that line which is left which is produced the patient still felt that she, she was seeing a bit of haze or slight doubling of letters in that area but it's much better the shine of the cornea is very crisp and it's giving a very clear picture of the cornea rather than a dull reflex with punctate keratopathy which we're seeing in initial pictures so you need to see on the slit lamp exactly as well if there's any thinning and that this is the last video which shows you on the day 47 that the epithelial defect has become very small and she had regained her vision to about 618 in that eye on that day and now we're going to show you a differential diagnosis just a few two cases couple of cases just to show you uh, how important it is this is a patient can have geographic keratitis necrotizing stromal keratitis or neurotropic keratitis here we're going to show a classic dendritic fluorescein staining here you can see the bed especially the edges stain with the fluorescein dye that is typical dendritic pattern or dendritic keratitis which you see in such patients this is the next patient this is more of a geographic keratitis it looks like a probably a triangle and it has got curved edges but the important thing which we want to see the reflex is dull but the other thing is this is the geographic keratitis we highlighted again now look at that cornea look at that cornea in the center look at the thickness of the cornea coming from the periphery and then going in the center i'm going to highlight that with uh, some shades and now you can see there is 50% thinning of that cornea in the center so that is what you want to look for in her pedic keratitis obviously if a patient is going through that stage you want to increase the acyclovir if it's not responding to topical you want to change it to try fluorothiamidine or gancyclovir so you get a better response because if you do not do that they end up into a desmatocele and they can get a perforation as well so just to go through the symptoms of such patients epithelial dendritic or geographic keratitis is associated with active viral replication it may be at any age with mild discomfort redness photophobia watering and blurring of vision 
and you get swollen opaque epithelial cells look you remember that epithelial cells which i showed you they were opaque and they were swollen at that area that's very important when you look at the sir arranged in a coarse punctate or stellate pattern the central desquamation where there's epithelial defect terminal buds at the ends and fluorescein stain of the bed margins of the ulcer stain with rose bengals so corneal sensation in this patient was reduced as well they also had that mild subepithelial haze especially in the time when this healing was occur the intraocular pressure we were giving her beta blockers but it was fortunately okay in this patient and mild epithelial scarring can occur and that happens more if you let that uh, disease linger on and uh, the healing to be slowed down so the treatment which can be given which we started off a cyclovir 3% or gan cyclovir to be used 5 times a day or the other is trifluorothymidine drops which are used 9 times a day the brightment to protect healthy epithelium so to eliminate the antigenic stimulus oral antiviral i tend to use it more nowadays it is in, but usually it's indicated in recurrent cases or immunosuppression or immunodeficient cases and you have interferon combination produces speed healing and then skin lesions are treated with ia cyclovir cream if you're using prostaglandin analogs for glaucoma you need to stop those because it has been shown we've shown in our study that uh, latanoprost tends to aggravate or causes recurrent herpetic keratitis topical steroid uh, obviously reactivate herpetic keratitis slow healing or frequent recurrence you tend to use topical agents combined with oral a cyclovir or fam cyclovir and for prophylaxis long term daily a cyclovir is used for recurrence epithelial and stromal keratitis by about 50% and usually well tolerated by the patients is considered in patients with frequent recurrences oral a val cyclovir 500 mg Uh, once daily or oral fam cyclovir are alternatives the prophylactic effects decrease when the drug is stopped so what are the complications you can get you can get secondary infections glaucoma cataract and iris atrophy so those are the things especially if you've got a herpetic keratitis look at that iris you will get see patches of iris atrophy you tend to get that mostly in two diseases one is angle closure glaucoma and the other is herpes simplex keratitis so in conclusion you should always have a high index of suspicion in cases of dendritic lesions of the cornea treat them early change the treatment strategy if it is not responding and recurrence to be picked up early by the patient and by the physician and if that happens you keep them on a maintenance dose because if it is left untreated for a long time it can cause i've known patients who've gone totally blind because it tends to recur even in corneal grafts when you put them so thank you very much for watching this video and i hope you'll like our channel and subscribe to our channel thank you